going to take that belt across the bra band. Okay, so if it across the bra band, you kind of want to center it. I have equal tails on that belt. Goes across the bra band, then over your shoulders, kind of like a funky little vest over the shoulders, and then you're going to cross it once or so in the back and cinch down on that. And then if you have a long enough belt or a skinny enough body, you might even <laughs> be able to buckle it in the front. You know? <laughs> Not having boobs helps, I guess. <laughs> uh, so if you have a long enough belt or a skinny enough body, you might be able to take that belt and buckle it underneath the boobs. And then your posture backpack stays on, hands free style. It really emphasizes the upper body. Also helps pull those shoulders back. Really broad, wide chest is what we're going for. So I'll show you that all over and over again. If you're there already, just stay there. Otherwise, I'm going to demo this bondage for everybody a second time in case you didn't catch it. So again, I've got my belt, as long a belt as you can get. And if you've got a short belt, if you've got two of them, put two of them together. So I've got a nice belt, long belt, and I'm centering it across the middle of my back right where that bra band is. And then I take it over my shoulders, goes around my back, up over my shoulders, and then I find those two tails in the back and I cross them once. It makes an X. And then I pull down on the tails of the belt. That will pull my shoulders back. I'm going to pull down as hard as I can tolerate. Again, depending on how long your belt is or how skinny your frame is, you might just be able to buckle that belt in the front. You want to kind of get it quite uh, secure, snug. You can get it there. Helps if you don't have boobs. Oh. Yeah, Underneath the boobs. Lovey, 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 look at that thing. <laughs> Posture support apparatus. $19.99, three easy payments. <laughs> there you go. Hey, Brandy. Yes? You forgot to mute everybody. I will. I wanted to see if you had any questions on this. This is the most complicated of them all. And I'll mute you all right now. Last. Last call for a special request. Anything special you want to work on? All good? All right, I'm muting you all. All right. So I do have this recording, but it's not recording you. It's only recording me. So you don't have to be as shy about turning your camera on. All right, so again, I've put on my posture backpack. And I've got two camera angles going. So probably the wide view is the best one right now. This posture backpack is really good for getting those shoulders onto your back. And it's even more effective if you take a couple good shoulder shrugs, inhaling up, exhaling back and down. A couple more times. Lara Croft Tomb Raider style. <laughs> <laughs> corset thing we got going on here. Big shoulder shrug up, back, and down. And you might find that after a couple of repetitions of this shoulder shrug that you might be able to pull down on that belt a little bit more, cinched up a little bit tighter if your shoulders are a little further back. So we'll do a couple more shoulder shrugs, maybe work up a good yaw. Palms are forward the entire time as you shoulder shrug. Inhale up, exhale back, and down. How about two more of those? Great big shoulder shrug. And a great big yawn. You're going to grow your fingernails down towards the ground, spread your toes out. Maybe shift your weight front to back, side to side. Find the bottoms of your feet and center your weight side to side, front to back. Lift up tall through the crown of your head. Knees unlocked. Belly fold in, tail tucking down. So you unlock your knees slightly so that you can lengthen your lower back. Zip your belly in. If your knees lock out, you tend to tip your hips uh, anteriorly. You tend to stick your booty out. So a slight bend in your knees will help you to pull in your lower belly and lengthen your lower back, doing that pelvic tilt. Shoulders up, back, and down. Head level on straight. You're going to grow up tall through the crown of your head. And have beautiful upright posture. Continue to breathe. 
Maybe turn your attention inward and focus your attention and breath into your upper chest. So that pectoral upper chest area, if you were a gorilla where you would beat your chest, that region. And a deep expansive breath, let your shoulder blades draw together and down your back. And then from here, release. Go ahead, unbuckle yourself. You're gonna take that belt ooh, out in front. You're gonna hold on to it about shoulder width apart. It's better to start narrow because it's easier to let out slack than it is to take it back up again. So start narrow, about shoulder width apart. You're gonna rev your engines. So room, room that motorcycle. So curl your knuckles down. And then shoulder shrug all the way up to your ears. Pull your shoulder blades back and down. Set your shoulders as if you're still wearing that posture backpack. Knees are locked, toes spread, head level in center. Now your challenge, if you choose to accept it, is to lift your arms up, but keep your front ribs drawn down. So lift your arms up only so far, and you're not going to get very far, only so far as you can go without your ribs, your front ribs tilting forward. And then when you get to wherever you're going, engage like you're going to rip the band apart. That will keep you from hyperextending and locking out your elbows. So rip the band apart. Hard. And then you might turn and look at one armpit and turn that armpit towards your face. <laughs> Check to see if you put on deodorant and turn your head to look at the other armpit, turn that armpit towards your face. Check to see if you put on deodorant and then put your head on center. Armpits draw down, front ribs draw down. Back body is long, tail is still tucked, knees are still unlocked, knuckles are still curled forward. And then you get to release back to front. Just standing around, hard work. You're gonna repeat, shoulder shrug, inhale all the way up. Back and down, put on that posture backpack. Front ribs, tuck in, like you're getting tickled. Vroom, vroom, rev your motorcycle. Unlock your knees, scoop your belly in. And then begin to bring your arms up and overhead again, only so far as you can go without your ribs moving, keeping those ribs tucked into your front waistband. And maybe your arms go back a slightly further the second time. And then once again, turn, check out one armpit, turn that armpit towards your face. Turn the other armpit towards your face and deepen those armpits. They should be wrinkles, grooves, pits, and hollows rather than bulges. Now for fun, let your hands separate. Let out a little bit of slack on that belt. So your hand, let me get a good angle here. So that belt separates a little bit. Your hands separate. There we go. Hands separate a little bit. Keeping armpits turned towards your face, armpits drawn down, front ribs tucked in. Can you bring those arms back a little bit further? Side view, again, you wanna make sure your knees are slightly bent so you can pelvic thrust tilt your hip. Front ribs are tucked in, head level. I'm squatting down a little bit so you can see my arms in the frame. Right. And then release back to the front. One more good shoulder shrug, great big yawn. Third time the charm. Once again, starting about shoulder width apart on that belt. Vroom, 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 rev your motorcycle engine, shoulder blades down and back, wearing that posture backpack. Knees unlocked, front ribs tucked in, pelvic thrust like a champ. Arms come up and overhead. Go as far as you can go without those ribs poking out. Turn and check out your armpit, drop it down. Turn the other armpit towards your face, drop it down. Keep those front ribs tucked in. And then let out a little bit more slack and a little bit more slack. And continue to move those arms back without your ribs poking. Move your arms back without your armpits poking, uh, bulging forward. Move your arms back, letting out a little bit of slack as you go without locking or hyperextending your wrists. Letting out a little slack, letting your arms drop further down, back behind you without your ribs poking out. Can you get those arms to flip all the way over? And then shake it out. We're gonna go up and over from the back. So now you're gonna take that belt across your bottom. Goes across your butt. You're gonna hold on to it with your thumbs poking out to the sides like you're hitchhiking. 
shoulder shrug. Pinch your shoulder blades together, feel a dripple of sweat pour down between those shoulder blades, and then press your knuckles down towards the ground. Keep revving those motorcycles. Knuckles are curled in towards your wrist, so the back of your wrist is open and flat. Shoulders are pinned together down your back. Front ribs are tucked in, knees are slightly bent, pelvic thrust tilt, abs are engaged, head is on level and straight, and you begin to lift those arms away from your back any amount at all. And breathe, big broad chest, breathing into your upper chest, keeping those front ribs tucked in. In fact, with each and every exhalation, you can tuck those front ribs in a little bit more. You wanna be expansive across your upper chest and drawn in across those front lower ribs. And then release. We're gonna do two more, so we'll be even, three on each side. Once again, grab a hold of that belt without shoulder width or hip width apart, thumbs hitchhiking out to the side, Knuckles curl in towards your hips. Shoulder shrug up, back, and down. Pinch those shoulder blades together. Head skids back on a conveyor belt. The back of your neck is long and wrinkle-free. Knees unlocked, pelvic thrust tilt, front ribs tuck in like you're getting tickled. And you're gonna pull those arms away from your back any amount at all. Try to lead with your elbows and not your knuckles. Maybe a slight micro bend. Unlock those elbows. Try to pull the elbows away more so than your knuckles. Knuckles curl in. Maybe let out a little slack. Maybe your arms lift up a little bit more. Again, front ribs tucked in, head level and straight, knees on lock. And then release. Oh. All right, third time's the charm. Now on this third one, you're going to have the option to bow forward and let gravity help pull those arms away from your back a little bit more. So we're going to start upright once again. Start narrow. It's always easier to take, let out slack than it is to gather it back up. So hold on narrow, about hip width apart. Thumbs pointing out to the side like you're hitchhiking. Knuckles curled in towards your hips. Shoulder shrug up back and pin those shoulder blades together and down. Knees on left, pelvic thrust tuck in those front ribs. Head centered. Back of your neck is long and wrinkle free. And you begin to pull those arms away from your hips. Leading with the elbows, keep those knuckles curled down. You want even more intensity, you can activate like you're trying to rip the band apart. Keep breathing. Let out a little bit more slack, maybe let your arms lift up a little bit more. And then if it's comfortable for you, you have the option of hinging over and letting gravity help pull those arms all the way over down to the ground. You might let out more slack as you go. Flipping your arms over is not required. It's just a funky circus trick. If you're able to do that, something you can show off on Zoom. All right, so now I'm going to hold on to that belt and take it over your right shoulder. I'm going to turn my back to you, so hopefully the right and left isn't too confusing. So take that belt over your right shoulder. Take your right arm out to the side. Turn your palm up. Look down into that armpit. Turn that armpit towards your face like you're checking for deodorant. Okay. Bring that arm out in front of you. Palm is still up. You're going to lead with the pinky finger. So you're going to try twisting that arm in socket like you're high-fiving. Or what is this thing? Hitchhiking. Hang 10. So tip your thumb down. Dial your pinky finger up. Keep turning that armpit towards your face. Suck the arm into the shoulder joint and drop those shoulder blades down your back. Still wearing that posture back then. Knees unlocked. Belly pulled in. Pelvic thrust tilt. And you're going to lift that right arm up. It's going to come in narrow, as close to the side of your head as you can get it. Let that right elbow bend. There's a belt right there you can take hold of. Left hand comes up and over, and you're going to plug that right arm bone deep into the shoulder joint. So push that arm into socket. Pull it across behind your head. Stay here. If this left rotator cuff permits, you have the option of taking your left hand out to the side, like a cactus, palm turned forward, and then rotating your palm paddles down and faces back behind you. And then you're going to work that left hand up between the shoulder blades to maybe hold on to the belt, maybe hold on to fingertips. Whatever you get a good grip on, get a good grip on it because you're going to activate like you're trying to pull your fingers apart. Activate like you're trying to rip the belt apart. Can you do this without your front ribs poking out? Those front ribs pulled in. Breathe. And then release. Ooh. 
feel the tingle, blood flowing back into that arm. Maybe give it a little jiggle. I'm gonna switch sides, put that belt over your left shoulder. Left arm out to the side, palm turns up. Okay. Gonna turn that, kind of take the flap, the flat meat from underneath your armpit. You want that to turn towards your face. Kind of go up your shoulder blade, down your back, and look down into that armpit. So put on your posture backpack, scoop the underside of that armpit towards your face, and then take that left arm out in front. Palm is up still. Try rotating that arm as far as you can so your thumb dives down, your pinky finger turns up towards the sky. You're externally rotating or supinating that arm as much as you can. You're gonna pull that arm into socket, put on that posture backpack. Front ribs are tucked in, knees unlocked, pelvic thrust, head level and straight. And then take that left arm up, let it swipe right against your ear, close to the side of your head, and then bend the elbow. Give yourself a pat on the back, find that belt. Right hand can come up and over to that left elbow and plug that left arm bone into the shoulder joint. And then drag it behind your head. Keep it plugged in as you drag it behind your head. Knees unlocked. Pelvic thrust, head on straight. Posture backpack the whole time. If it works for you to take this right arm out to the side, you start to a cactus arm and then you rotate, palm down. You're gonna let that right shoulder kind of slouch forward. So you can slide that right hand up between the shoulder blades. Get a good strong grip on that belt or catch your fingertips and then rip the belt apart. Pulling hard on that belt, you might find that top elbow swings back behind you a little bit more. Resist the temptation to let those ribs poke out. Head still level and straight. Knees unlocked. Breathing. And then release. <laughs> Maybe jiggle. Let the blood flow back in. And now, going to tie those arms together. So now you're going to take that belt and you're going to make a loop with it. You know how to work the buckle, that's even better. If you've got one with a buckle, that's the best. But if you're working with a bathrobe tie, you're just going to put a tie in it. You're going to put a knot in it in a moment. And you want to knot your belt or tie your belt or buckle your belt so that you have a loop that will hold your arms shoulder width apart. And I'm gonna make sure I don't put the buckle against my skin. I'm gonna put that buckle in between my arms. Let me see if I get a good camera angle, there we go. So it's above my elbows and it's about shoulder width apart. I'm wearing black, it's bad. It doesn't contrast too well. So there you can see that. So it's above my elbows and it's keeping my arms about shoulder width apart. Hey, if you got a zoom camera and you're checking here, you can see uh, in the screen, it's like a mirror. So you want your arms to be shoulder width apart. And if you have one, you're gonna put a block between eyes. If you don't have a block, a stuffed animal will do. Kids ball will work. Put something between your legs. Get real friendly with it. And it's narrow and it's up there between your thighs. You're gonna bring your feet in as narrow as you can get them. I'm gonna turn to a slight angle for you here. So I'm squeezing that brick. The belt is not pinching against my skin. I'm gonna take my shoulders up, back, and down. Put on that posture backpack. Posture backpack, shoulders back and down, front rib pull in. Knees are gonna bend as you do that pelvic thrust tilt. Good. You're gonna to start to squat. Now push your arms against that band and draw your shoulder blades back. Push your arms out against the band and pull your shoulder blades back and pull your front ribs back and bring your head back and breathe. Squeeze that brick. So arms are pushing out, thighs are squeezing in. And then come all the way up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We're gonna repeat. So your arms are out in front of you, you're turning your palms forward. Trying to rotate your arms so your thumbs hitch out to the side. Good. Armpits turn towards your face. Posture backpack. This is even better if you don't have boobs in the way. So posture backpack. Knees bent, pelvic thrust, front ribs tuck in. And now your challenge is to bring your arms up and overhead. Keep pushing your thumbs wide. There's really no good place for your head with this one. You might end up with that band across your forehead. 
In fact, if you push your forehead against the band, you might be able to activate your abs a little bit more and sit down a little bit deeper in this chair pose. Activating your abs, you can tuck your tail towards your heels and maybe sit a little bit lower as you continue to squeeze that brick and then come all the way up and release. Cool. Shake a leg or two. So I don't know if you noticed, but when you had that band around your arms and you were pushing out against it, your shoulders tend to drop away from your ears and spread across your back. We want that same sensation of spreading and dropping in our hips when we are in our chair pose. We're gonna do chair pose again with the band on the thighs. So, band is gonna go around the thighs. You need a slightly bigger loop. And the brick is gonna go between your legs. So you put that brick in, and then you tie that band, it's not a tourniquet, the belt. You make sure that buckle's not digging into your skin. I like to put it right centered between my thighs. Now I've got my belt above the knee. And I'm gonna push that belt so that no matter how hard I push my knees apart, the brick's not gonna fall. So I wanna cinch in nice and tight. But I've got the brick there that keeps me from making my legs bow-legged. I'm gonna keep my knees directly underneath my hips. I don't wanna bow my legs by cinching too tight. That's why I got the block there. So you can cinch up nice and tight without your knees bowing in. Okay. Then the buckle is not on your skin. Your feet end up being about hip width apart. Block between your thighs. Let's repeat. Shoulders up, back and down. Put on that posture backpack. Tuck in your front ribs. Squeeze the brick. At the same time, spread your heels. Stick out your bottom. Squeeze the brick with your inner thighs. Spread your heels. Widen your bottom. Pelvic thrust. Tuck in your front ribs. Arms out in front. Palms turn up. Posture backpack. Thumbs are pointing out to the sides. Armpit. <laughs> Turn towards your face as you sit down into that chair pose and maybe bring your arms overhead with an imaginary band across those arms. With that imaginary band across your arms, push your forehead against that imaginary band. Activate your abs. Spread your heels. Relax your butt and drop it like it's hot. Because it's hot out here. <laughs> and it come all the way up. And release. Loosen that band. Leave the brick. Brick is going to stay between your thighs. The brick stays there between the thighs. And now that band is going to go down below the knee, between the knee and the ankle. Again, make sure that band is uh, nice and flat, it's not digging into your skin. And I encourage you to have that buckle in the middle so it's not touching your skin. You've got a brick between your thighs, you end up with your knees, your heels. Thighs about hip width apart, hip bone width apart. Now, if you have an extra block or two, those would be quite handy for underneath your hands. I'm going to turn sideways. So knees are bent, slightly unlocked. Activate like you're spreading your heels, turning your inner thighs against the brick. Squeeze on those inner thighs, spread out through your heels. Turn your right knee to the right, the left knee to the left. Stick out your booty, hands at the top of your thighs, and begin to hinge forward. Notice my knees are bent. You can see them in the camera there. My knees are unlocked, slightly bent. I'm pushing back hard at the top of my thighs, and I'm still holding onto that brick, but my inner thighs are rotating in such a way that it's starting to stick out behind me like a Pez dispenser. Let me show you that. Let me show you the candy there. Right there, Pez dispenser sticking out between my legs. Yoga pose, yoga Pez. So knees unlocked, spreading your heels, spreading those sit bones. Hinging forward even further. And then you're going to take your hands onto your bricks, a pile of books, or small children, or cats, whatever you have. Put your hands on something, something away from your body so that your side can stay long. Sometimes, if you're reaching towards your toes, you tend to kind of collapse the upper body and get too many wrinkles of skin in the way. But with your hands on blocks out ahead of you, you can have some breathing space in those ribs because we're going to be here for a while. Head is just hanging. 
Hopefully you can follow along without looking. So your knees are still unlocked. You're still spreading your heels, pressing out against the belt. At the same time, squeezing your inner thighs, pressing your pez, your brick, out back through your thighs behind you. Your head is hanging. And you're feeling one heck of a hamstring stretch, even though your legs are unlocked. And if it works for you, if you got good contact with your hands, you might shift your weight forward, see what that does. Shift your weight backwards, see what that does. Shift your weight forward and back. Try not to lock the knees, bendy people. And continue to work at spreading your heels, pressing out against that band, sticking out your booty, keeping a slight micro bend to your knees, keeping your thighs engaged. And then come to neutral, bend your knees, release the belt, drop the brick. Oh, slowly crawl your hands up your lap to come up to standing. And maybe shake out a leg or two. Oh. We're going to be making our way down to the ground for a downward facing dog. So you might want to switch camera angles or move your screen in such a way that you can still see me. We're going to be doing a down dog, then some lying down stuff, but then we'll stand up again eventually. So we're making our way down to the ground for a downward facing dog. And this is a belted bondage yoga class, so we're going to be using the belt. And again, that belt is going to go around your upper arms, or just, just above the elbows. Again, there's no good place for your head in some of these variations. The arms about shoulder width apart, buckle out of the way, not pinching against your skin. You're going to start by turning your palms forward, put on your posture backpack, shoulders back and down, armpits. <laughs> Turn towards your face. And notice I've turned my palms up and I pitch hike my thumbs out to the side. I'm actually pushing out against the band a little bit to feel that widening across my upper back. Maybe grow your neck longer as you drop your shoulders away from your ears. So that lovely space between your ears and your shoulders, and the lovely space between your ears, you try to maintain that space when you come into your downward face and dog. Maybe get this same sensation of neck stretch in a down dog. Aspirations, right? So I'm trying to maintain the same rotation in my upper body in my arms, but turn my palms down. So shoulders and that posture backpack. Armpits still turn toward your face. The pale skin of your inner arms turn toward your face, but then you flip your palms down. And you put your hands down. And you push out against the band, the belt. It keeps you from locking your elbow. Push out hard. Try to break the belt. Good. Toes curl under. Knees unlocked. Bottoms up into a downward facing dog. And you've got a place to rest your forehead. So you can really let those arms plug in deep to your shoulders. And take your feet as wide apart as the mat and let your hips sway from side to side. Keep wearing that posture backpack. Keep pulling in your front ribs, even as you sway your hips wide from side to side. Maybe pivot on the toes. Swing both heels one way, both heels the other. And with all this play in your lower body, in your hips and your legs, try to maintain your posture backpack. Try to maintain those armpits turned toward your face. Try pushing out against that belt. Fingers spread wide. And for a lot of us, it actually feels you could stay in this pose a lot longer than usual. It's not as tiring. And from here, you're going to bend your knees, come on down, and release. Oh. Let your arms out. We'll go right back into that band again in a moment, but let your arms out for now. Take a couple good shoulder shrugs, maybe even yawn. <sighs> Great big shoulder shrugs, great big yawns. All right, sides and the back of your neck, nice and long, posture back up. All right, we're gonna repeat. You have the option of doing the down dog again, or you can come into a dolphin pose, which is a prep for Pinchamayarasana, peacock pose uh, for a All right, so if you're doing the Downward facing dog variation, it's above the elbows. Low as you can get it, but above the elbows. If you're doing the Pincha Mayarasana, a dolphin pose variation, you have the belt 
just below the elbows. Just below the elbows on the forearms. All right, so if you're doing the dolphin pose, same rotation in the, in the upper body. So turn your palms up first, hitchhike your thumbs out to the side, put on that posture backpack, turn the underside of your armpit towards your face, tuck in your front ribs. A nice, long, elegant neck. If you're doing down dog, you would just flip your palms down. Continue from there. If you're not doing down dog, we're gonna encourage you to put your hands, back of your hands down on the ground, feel your elbows stick, and then turn your palms to the floor. You're gonna push out against that belt and the belt's gonna prevent that elbow, the elbows from going anywhere. Shoulders are down away from your ears, or down away, up away from your ears, and bottoms up into your downward facing dog or dolphin pose. And the dolphin pose are in the downward facing dog as well. Bend your knees, lift your heels, and flip your buns up. Bend your knees, lift your heels, and flip your cheeks to the sky, and then try to press your inner thighs back. Spread your heels. Press your inner heels straight back and get long. You let your head hang. And everybody's head is descending down towards the ground. If you're doing the down dog, you can let your forehead rest against that belt. If you're here joining me in the dolphin pose variation, your head might be resting against the belt. And you're breathing. Front ribs are pulled in. You don't want to collapse in the chest. Nobody wants a saggy chest. Try not to sag your front ribs out. Not a back bend, back lengthener. And then come on down. Shoulder shrug, inhale up, back and down. And just take a moment to settle those shoulders away from your ears, put on your posture backpack one more time and feel the change in the upper body. And breathe. Maybe your fingertips grow longer down towards the ground. Maybe your fingertips touch where they don't usually touch. Ha, ha, ha. Fun stuff. All right. So now we're going to work with that open chest and some more posture work in a belted variation of locust pose. Now this is where having a long belt or a double belt would really come in handy because you want some length. If you have two short ones, you can buckle them together so you have a long one. The, the longer the better. And if it doesn't quite reach, it's because you're really long or your belt's really short. You might want to have a quick look-see at this one before you go face down. I'm going to take uh, a prone position face down and I'm going to put that belt, this might take some fidgeting, across the soles of my feet. All right? And I'm going to curl my toes under I've got that belt across the soles of my feet, and I've got a hold of the belt. I'm holding onto the ends of the belt. I might start looping that belt around the back of my hands. My toes are curled under, so I can press back through my heels and lift my knees away from the ground, and the belt's got a good place to catch the soles of my feet. It's not going to slip off. I can trust that belt to hold me as I take a shoulder shrug up, back, and away from my ears. Put on that posture backpack. Squeeze elbows in narrow, and maybe hook up on that belt a little bit and begin to peel my chest away from the ground. Keep pulling on that belt to peel yourself away from the ground. Keep pressing back through your heels. Keep pressing your knees away from the ground, pinching your shoulder blades together. Can you do this and relax your butt? Can you do this and spread your heels to relax your butt? And maybe into that space between your sit bones, you tuck your tail with a pelvic thrust, like you're zipping up your tight yoga pants, pulling in that kegel. And then you get to release and jiggle and wiggle like jello. Now, the harder you push your feet into that belt, the more secure and stable you are, the more you work your legs, the happier your back will be. We're going to repeat this one. So I'm going to choke up on that belt a little bit. Try not to lose it. I'm going to try to hold as low as I can on that belt. Again, the trick to keeping that belt hooked on your feet is to keep those toes curled under and your legs active. Hold down as low as you can go. 
Shoulder shrug up, back and down. Chin tucked to your chest. You can activate your abs. Tuck your front ribs in, even as you squeeze your shoulder blades together. Kick out hard through your heels with your toes curled under. Knees lift away from the ground. Press the front of your hip joints into the floor. As you squeeze your shoulder blades together, maybe pull on that belt, arching yourself away from the ground. Chin is tucked. The base of your skull is long. Still wearing that posture backpack as best you can. Abs are active. And then release. <sighs> and breathe. And then release the belt. Jiggle like jello. And bend your knees up. Waggle. Waggle your legs, your shins side to side. Now to make sure your lower back is very happy, I'm gonna have you flip over. So you can kind of kick yourself on over, roll yourself on over, and have all your toys nearby. All right. Pillow for underneath your head, not a bad idea. A couple of blocks nearby just for fun. And a belt. Two if you've got two. I'm going to take that belt around the bottom of your right foot and raise the roof. Oh, we've all done this one a zillion times. How can we do this hands-free and engage the upper body a little bit more? Well, we can get fancy with the belt if it is long enough. This is why you might need two to buckle them together to get an extra long length because you want to take that belt across that bra band once again. So I got the belt across the bra band. I'm going to lie down. I'm going to tie myself in. You might not have much of a tail left on that belt. So again, I've got that brand across the band, the belt across the band of my bra, or nipple line wrapped around to your back. Right leg goes up into the air. I have my left knee bent, my left foot flat. And I'm giving myself a little bit of slack. I could actually probably ratchet that leg in further, but I'm just letting the leg be heavy. I'm letting the leg hang away. I'm letting the leg get very heavy. And I'm using the belt to support the leg. And I'm also tucking in my front ribs because we're not doing a back bend. Keep those front ribs tucked in so that you're pressing that band down into the ground. You're not letting it lift your chest away from the mat. And also to keep more of your back on the floor, you've got your knee bent, your left knee bent, left foot just resting lightly on the ground. So both feet are flexed flat. Right leg is very, very heavy. Now take your left leg straight up into the air alongside the right, both feet flexed flat. Yep. Front ribs are tucked in. Your challenge is to keep your front ribs tucked in, both shoulders, back of your head down on the ground. Lower back, belly, pressing into your spine. As best you can, that pelvic thrust tilt still maintained in your hips. The distance between front ribs and pubis bone, short and tight, zip tie it. Slowly lower that left leg only so far as everything else stays in place. And you may find that that left leg is hovering. I don't know, what is it? Eight inches off the ground. Front ribs pulled in, nice and tight. And breathe. So this right leg is heavy. You're letting that right leg hang. You're letting that right leg push into the band and you're pressing your ribs down against the floor to hold that band across your bra line. And your left leg is heavy. And it's descending down towards the ground after three or four breaths. The muscles kind of get the idea that, okay, this is where we're gonna be. And your bones begin to settle. 
and the psoas muscle inside your pelvis begins to lengthen. And you're breathing. And you're wearing that posture backpack. And the back of your right leg is really broad and flat. And then exhale, make your belly strong. Sweep that left leg in towards the midline. Like you got a pee, hold it in, pull up on that kick. You know, make that left leg going on the floor very short. Begin to draw it into your pelvis. Speaking of pelvis, find those front hip bones and close them in towards one another. Like you're trying to snap close really tight pants, pulling on really tight jeans. So pulling those front hip bones in towards one another, shortening that left leg. Begin to float your left leg up away from the ground. Nothing changes in the torso. You can bring both knees in and slip the right foot out, slip the left foot in. We're switching sides. So you might take a breather. I reset. So I just put my left foot in the belt. And again, I have barely any tail left on this belt. My right knee is bent, right foot is flat. And I'm going to let that left leg get very heavy. If you're not weight bearing on it, feel free to lock it out. If that works for you, that leg does go towards hyperextending. It's okay here. It's supported. It's not supporting. Any weight, it's good. It really gives that hamstring a chance to relax when you just let the knee yawn open and you're not weight bearing on it. Put his flex flat and that left leg very heavy. It's trying to drop down towards the ground and you are countering that by tucking in your front ribs. Your right knee is bent, your right foot is flat on the floor so you can really feel your lower back flat down on the ground. Hips really wide and flat. Shoulders shrugged away from your ears. You're still wearing your posture backpack. Back of your head down on whatever you're resting it upon. All right, inhale. Exhale, let that left leg get even heavier. Now the right leg comes on up, straight up into the sky, alongside it. Now flex that right foot. Nothing changes in the torso as you slowly let that right leg descend down towards the ground. Only so far as you can go without anything changing in your torso. That right leg is narrow, like you got to pee. You're wearing this uh, short skirt as you practice this. You know where Mula Banda is, you're trying to conceal that. And you're breathing. And you may begin, you may begin to notice the muscles kind of get used to the situation. Maybe the psoas muscle deep inside that right hip pelvis starts to lengthen, release. And maybe your bones begin to settle. And your left leg is still heavy in the belt. Back of the left leg is yawning open. The back of the left thigh is broad and flat. Thigh bone pressing against the back of your thigh. Front ribs tucked in. Still wearing that posture backpack. Breathing. And then that right leg, the one that's down towards the ground, squeezes in towards midline like you got to pee. And it shortens, it draws up into your pelvis, and you find those front hip bones, you draw them in towards one another like you're buttoning up really tight jeans, and your front ribs are tucked in, and nothing's going to change in your torso as you exhale. Gather up your strength, and then gather that right leg straight up towards the sky. And then bend your knees in towards your chest. If you like that kind of ab work, that's what we do in yoga for abs on Tuesdays at 3. If you're interested. Take a moment to set the belt aside and rest with your knees bent, feet flat. Notice how much of your lower back is on the ground. And breathe.
All right. Hopefully your belt is still buckled in a great big loop. You might roll over and sit up and see where I'm placing this belt. It's really hard to tell what's going on from the ground. So this is my right leg and I put the belt around my right thigh and it goes around the bottom of my left foot. And I'm trying to get this buckle in such a way that I can still cinch up on it if I need to. So it's a kind of a funky situation here. That's it. That's it. Okay, that's it. <laughs> it took me a moment. Okay, so I put it around my right hip and around the bottom of my left foot. And I've got this tab available so that when I scissor my legs to go the opposite way, it is across the top of my right thigh and the bottom of my left foot. Did you see that little scissor move? So this goes across the top of your right thigh and around the bottom of your left foot. And you want to cinch up on that belt enough so that's a nice strong hold. So you really have to push out through that left heel. If you push out through that left heel, your right leg gets super, super straight. Now if you have a second belt, that's great. The second belt can help you to lasso the foot. So I've bent my right knee in. We're just going to pause here. My right knee coming into the chest. This belt is deep in my groin. I'm pushing out hard through my left foot to pull my right hip away from my right shoulder. My right hip pulling down towards my left heel. Deep hip crease here. Working that belt deep into the hip crease and I'm pushing hard on that heel. I cinched up enough uh, slack. I'm really pulling that right hip down away from my right shoulder. Just getting the hip used to that situation. You stay here. Last of the bottom of that right foot and then try stretching the right leg straight. Ooh. You don't have a second belt, you're just holding on to the back side of the right thigh. And you're breathing. And all that same upper body stuff applies. You're just adding in, pressing through that left foot to pull the right hip down away from your armpit. And that right leg still is probably more or less straight up at its most. I'm not trying to put that leg behind my shoulder or anything. I'm letting my right leg be very heavy. I'm pressing my right thigh into my hand hard. I have to fight to hold on. If you're holding onto the belt, same idea. You're just letting that leg be very heavy in the belt. In fact, if you were really fancy, you're really into bondage and you had two or three belts, you would do the chest belt around the bottom of the right foot also. You can double belt yourself. All right, and then go ahead, bend that right knee, bend your left knee, switch sides, however that might work for you. In the end, you're gonna end up with a belt across the front of your left thigh and the bottom of your right foot. Is my sound still good? So we're taking this intermediate step of holding on to my shin, letting that hip get used to the position first. At this moment, I still have just the right leg straight kicking into that belt. My left knee is bent into my chest. So you take three or four breaths, five or six breaths, even longer sometimes to get that thigh bone to really sink down. 
away from your deep in that left hip crease is what you're trying to do. And then if you have a second belt, the second belt can go around the bottom of that left foot. And you can take your left leg straight up or just hold on to the back side of the left thigh. Take the left leg straight up. And you're going to let that left leg get really heavy. Same idea of letting the back of the thigh wide in. The knee pick opens up. Breathe. I'm still working the leg on the ground. I'm pushing my right foot hard into the belt, keeping that left hip deep, left hip crease really deep. All right. In case you haven't noticed, we've done a couple of hamstring stretches. That means I'm probably warming up to something where you need long hamstrings. All right, so from here, go ahead, bend one knee, bend both knees. Bail out of that. Take a moment to set the belt aside and just stretch out, flat out. Maybe reach down and spread the fat out. <laughs> spread yourself out nice and flat on the ground. And notice how flat you are on the ground. and breathe. Maybe shrug those shoulders underneath like you're putting on that posture backpack once again just for fun. Tuck those front ribs in. Maybe shake your head no. And breathe. All right. We're going to make our way up to standing. Any way you want. Want to rock and roll? Pitch yourself forward into a forward fold. Stand up from there, that's all you. Or you can just roll on over, crawl on up. Coming up towards standing. And we're gonna get toys. A couple of blocks. And of course a belt. We're gonna set up for pyramid pose. So remember that feeling of the band in the hip crease and on the opposite foot? I'm gonna do the same thing standing up in our pyramid pose. Again, positioning that belt in such a way that you have a uh, tab or a tail that you can work. So this is my, hmm, this is my right leg. And I've got the band at the top of my right thigh. And I'm gonna put my left foot in the belt. So across my lap in front, and across my arch in back on the front thigh, up in that hip crease. And I'm gonna bend my knees slightly so I can really cinch up on that belt so I've got something to fight against. I got my blocks nearby. I'm gonna sneak a peek at my feet, make sure I'm on two separate skis, maybe hop that front foot wider or wiggle the back foot wider. Hands go on blocks beneath the shoulders and take a moment to exhale like your cat pose and try to pull the front leg straight. Exhale into cat pose, put a bend to the back knee, press your inner thigh back, press your inner heel back as you stretch that inner heel down towards the ground. You're cheating yourself if that back heel is resting heavy. You want to really stretch that inner back heel straight back. And if you don't feel enough tension on this belt, bend the back knee once again, cinch up on it, and repeat. So you're going to bend both knees. Cinch up on the belt, and then try to straighten both knees. Push hard into that back arch. Maybe inch the front foot forward by pulling both legs straight without locking the front knee. All your weight shifting over the front leg, make sure that front knee is unlocked. You got blocks underneath your hands so you're not squishing your belly, so you can breathe, so you can be here a while. That belt goes across the arch of the back foot, but it also comes up on the pinky toe side of that back foot. Can you press that back heel wide? Like you're trying to sweep the back foot, this is my left foot and back, my left foot over to the left a little bit further. Also try to sweep the front foot, my right foot over to the right a little bit further. Right foot to the right, left foot to the left. 
and maybe that will allow me to square my hips a little bit better. And breathe. Then soften as gracefully as possible. I know you're kind of caught in that belt. Get to the switch sides. But take a moment, a slow transition, hands on your lap to come up to standing and just stand in your new legs for a moment. Maybe shift and sway a little bit. Maybe let out some slack on that belt. Because you're going to have to kind of reset it to start on the other side. Cool. That's a pyramid pose. Walking like an Egyptian afterwards here. So walk it out a little bit, sway it out a little bit. I'm going to do the other side. So, again, life and right's a little confusing. I'm putting the, the tail near my thigh, but not on my thigh. Across the front of my left hip. It's going across the arch of my right foot. I bend both knees so I can cinch up on that belt, make my loop a little tighter. Hinge over, hands go on blocks beneath my shoulders, flat tabletop back. Now swing that back heel out a little bit wider. Bend both knees for just a moment. Cinch up on that belt. And then re-straighten. Holding the front leg first, the back leg, pressing that inner heel back, 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 back. You can bend and straighten a few times. Keep working that belt ever tighter, deeper into that left hip crease. Pressing into that back heel harder. Pulling your back leg straighter. Making your torso flatter. Maybe squaring your hips by engaging, you're pressing your left foot to the left and your right foot to the right. Breathing. Front knee stays on lock. And then soften, bail out. Oh. If you want to, you can hit the deck and do a down dog, or you can crawl your hands up your lap, come up to standing, and once again, just take a moment to settle onto your bones. And notice how your hips and pelvis feel different. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Go for a triangle pose. So again, I'm gonna loosen up my belt, keeping it buckled, but I'm loosening it up. And, I'm going to take it around your right thigh. I'm going to try mirroring you. Does it, uh, on your right lap and on your left arch. And all 10 toes turning to the right. And I've got my belt here so I can bend my knees and cinch up on it. And then push hard. So bend my knees a little bit, cinch up on it, down on it, and then re-straighten. So make it worth the effort. Maybe wiggle your feet a little wider apart. Really push into that belt around the bottom of your foot. Bend your knees. Make sure you got a good, strong cinch. And then powering into both feet, flaring all 10 toes. Try to keep that front knee from unlocking. Maybe your blocks are still nearby. I'm gonna reach out through your right arm. And tip, 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 over. Maybe putting your right hand down on a block. Left hand is free to cinch down on that belt if you need it. Or maybe you can wiggle your feet wide or apart. Keep pressing hard into that belt. You should have resistance from that belt. It's helping you to drop your right thigh bone against the hamstring. Press your right thigh bone deep against your hamstring. Let the knee open up, but not lock out. Top hand on your hip, you can shrug your shoulders back and down. Turn your chest open. Even here, you're still wearing that posture backpack. Front ribs are tucked in, shoulders are down together on your back, and you're breathing. And then you're gonna gracefully, maybe grab your second block, bail out of that, and switch sides. Oh, but take a moment to pause in between. 
So as you loosen up that belt once again, take a moment to feel the difference on the two sides. And now the belt is gonna go on your left lap. Again, I've got the buckle near the top here so I can cinch on it. And then I'm gonna step on it with my right foot. And take a nice long stride between my feet. Then ankles underneath the wrists. And bend both knees for a moment so I can cinch that belt tighter. Bend my knees a little bit, cinch that belt even tighter. As my bones settle into this, again, I have all 10 toes turned over to the left. As my left thigh bone starts to press against my left hamstring, my hips start to tip. I'm able to cinch down on that belt over and over and over again. You're pressing hard against that belt. And keep that front knee unlocked. Left arm can extend out, 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 out. And then left hand can come rest on a brick. Your triangle pose variation. The top hand is free to cinch on that belt, bend a knee, and then straighten. Bend a knee, cinch down, re straighten. Fight to keep that front knee unlocked. Stomp down hard into that back foot. Turn your chest open, posture back, tuck front ribs are still pulled in. The triangle pose. And then soften, gracefully bail out of that one. And you know the drill, you're gonna come up to stand and settle in. Well, there's different styles of Hatha yoga. One of the styles that's most famous for using props is the Iyengar style. And typically in between poses in an Iyengar style class, you would just kind of pause and breathe and notice the difference between the two sides or how your body feels differently. There's always that moment of reflection in between poses. They don't necessarily flow from one pose to the next is what I'm saying. They just take a moment to settle, observe, and then do the next thing. But it's definitely not a flow style. All right, so we're gonna repeat that same belting position, proposition, but we're gonna turn it into side angle pose, side flanker. Ars or Konasana, however you know it. I've turned around here for a moment. The belt is going to go on your right thigh, your right lap, and in the arch of your left foot. Again, I'm mirroring you. Hopefully that helps the right and left situation. On your right thigh, left foot. And you've got a tail here, and you know what to do with it. You're going to bend your knees and cinch on that belt, and then power your legs straight. Letting that right thigh bone press against the hamstring. And then you're gonna let that right knee bend. You're gonna try dropping that thigh bone down. And that belt is gonna pinch right into your groin like you wouldn't believe. You might let out a little slack, but you do want some tension. You want that band on that thigh bone, pushing the thigh bone down, dragging the thigh bone out of your pelvis. Thigh bone being pulled out of the hip joint. You're not gonna dislocate your hip. But that's kind of the, this, the action that you want to engage. So this is my thigh bone in my pelvis. I want that thigh bone to descend down. It unjams the top of the hip joint. Pressing into that back foot, back heel. Front knee is bent. And you might find that you're actually able to stay in this stance a lot longer than you usually would. From here, take that right arm, stand out, lengthen that right side body, and put that elbow in your lap. Posture back, back, front ribs pulled in, pelvic thrust even, pulling up your belly, dropping your tail, letting your thigh bone get really heavy, and then you can finish this pose, that top armpit <laughs> alongside your ear, palm flat to the floor like you're dribbling a basketball, and breathing. This is your side flank, side angle pose. And then release. Oh. And again, as gracefully as possible, <laughs> not a pretty transition. You're gonna come up to standing, maybe loosen up that belt, and get ready to do the other side. Take a moment to pause, to breathe, to kind of 
You can feel the fluids and the bones and the muscles kind of reset here, settle. We can do the other side. So hopefully you feel the essence of belt across the front of that right hip, and now you're gonna put the belt across the top of your left thigh. And it's gonna go underneath your right arch. And you're gonna go wide. Keep your feet as wide apart as your outstretched arms. Bend both knees, cinch up on that belt a little bit. Get some tension on it. Good. And it's pushing, as you pull your legs straight, you're pressing the left thigh bone against the left hamstring. Maybe wiggling, pressing harder into that back heel. You can see you have a good wide stride. And then you're gonna let, invite that left knee to swing open like a gate. Swing that left knee open like a gate. Let that left thigh bone drop down into the back of the thigh, into the hamstring. Shoulders back and down, posture back, back belly pulled in. Make sure you got some tension on that belt, but not too much. Good support going on here. Going to lengthen out, lengthen out, lengthen out, and put that left elbow on your lap. Posture your backpack, shoulders down, front ribs pulled in. Zip up your tight pants. Even draw those front hip bones in towards one another a little bit. Like you're trying to buckle your really tight pants. And then finish it off with that top armpit turned towards your top ear, palm flat towards the ground. Still wearing your posture back. Side angle pose, side plank. Far as the corner. And then gracefully bail out. Oh. For this one? Maybe a small loop, a small loop to catch the foot. So you've got a nice long tail. I think I'm gonna do this one with my, I'll do it with my front to you. Okay. So the belt's gonna go around the bottom of your right foot. I'm gonna lasso that right foot. You're going to step wide, turning all your toes to the left. I got this belt in my right hand. And I'm holding on to it. Got some tension on it. I'm actually pulling up on the belt, shoulders back and down. Pulling up on the belt, so that means I'm pushing down against the belt with my foot. And I'm going to invite that right knee to bend, that left knee to bend. It's a warrior two. It's not as supported, strangely as when you had that belt pulling your thigh bone down, but try pressing that thigh bone down as if you still had a belt around it. Push that thigh bone deep down against the back of your thigh. And then you're gonna ease out a bit, draw this front foot back, and as you do so, engage your pelvic floor to help drag that heel in. It's a kegel that starts at your ankle. You're gonna drag this right foot back, pelvic floor pulled in. You're gonna hold it in. You're gonna start to shift weight onto your right foot. This is your left foot. Onto your left foot. Onto your left foot. And you might have a block out there to help you as you tip over and begin to float your right leg up into the sky. And you're still holding on to that belt. And you're still pressing hard through the heel. And you're putting on your posture backpack and you're turning your chest open and you're balancing. This is your half moon pose. Pressing hard into that belt, but you're pulling on the belt, keeping the thigh bone plugged into your pelvis. And you're wearing your posture backpack and you're breathing. And your standing knee is unlocked and your toes are spread. Your head's on as an extension with the rest of your spine. There you go. And you are breathing. You're gonna soften the standing knee. And slowly. <laughs> Slowly, come on up to standing. Shake out a leg or two. And do the same thing on the other side. Good news is we're getting towards the end of the standing poses. So there's a lot you can do and you might have to do another one of these belted classes. 
So you're going to take that belt around the bottom of your left foot. You're going to let your right knee bend into your warrior two. Your shoulders are down and your front ribs are tucked in. You've got a good pull on that belt. So there's really no slack in that belt. And your shoulders are down. And your front ribs are tucked in and your pants are zipped up, buckled up nice and tight. And your thigh bone is sinking down deep against the back of the thigh. And you're even trying to create space in this right hip by descending your right thigh bone down to the ground, making that right thigh bone really heavy. Now you're going to engage your inner thigh, your pelvic floor as you drag that right foot back, choke up, pull in, begin to tip, maybe use a block underneath your right hand, tip, and lift and pull on that leg, lifting it up, putting on your posture backpack. Leg is pushing against the belt, hand is pulling hard on that belt, <laughs> you might fall over, that's fine. Challenging yourself to balance. And breathing. Standing knee unlocked. Lifted leg is short. It's plugged in, pulled into your pelvis. And you're breathing. And you're balancing. And you are so awesome. And then go ahead and release. Oh, slowly coming on up out of that one. Now, there's a possibility some of you might want to do an Ardha Chandra Chapasana and around the moon pose because you've prepped your shoulders and you've done a little bit of back bending and you've definitely prepped your legs for it. Some of you, maybe with the use of the belt, the assistance of a belt, might consider maybe practicing this by yourself later because we're gonna move on because we're already over in an hour. Maybe doing something that looks like this. Let me just make that mental note. The belt would go around the back foot, shoulders back and down. Get ready to tip on over into your half moon pose. Lift that leg up, find some good balance, and then maybe hold on to the foot. It's like a tipped over dancer pose called around the moon. Maybe kick your foot into your hand. And stretch without locking out the knee. That's what around the moon looks like. That's something for you to play with. The rest of us, all of us, are going to move on to a revolved side angle pose, a revolved standing lunge to help loosen up our backs just in case we were gripping there. And for this one, we're going to need a big loop once again. So a big loop with just a little tail, big loop with just a little bit of tail. Again, I'm going to mirror you. So it's going to go around my right thigh. Actually, it's going to go around my right shin and my left foot. So left foot, right shin. So it's lower. Before it was on the thigh, now it's down on the shin. And I want to be able to take my feet as wide apart as my outstretched arms. That's why I got that big loop. And this right knee is turned out. And I'm pushing my shin against the belt. I might let out a little slack on that belt so I can have my shin more or less straight up and down over my heel. So this is where having two belts might be preferable. Might be a good idea to have two belts. Okay. So you wanna let out enough slack but still have your feet wide, enough slack so that you can push your shin hard into that belt. Let your thigh bone drop down deep into your pelvis, shoulders back and down. And we're going to pick up the back heel. So picking up the back heel, I'm going to swing that back heel, that would be your left heel, over to the left. Now you're pivoting your pelvis. You're squaring your hips towards the front edge of your mat or whatever edge of this mat this is. And maybe you're taking this back foot, hopping it a little bit wider. 
or the front foot a little bit wider. And you might cinch up on your band a little bit so that you can push into that front shin and into the back foot. Back leg straight, front shin over the heel. Hips are squaring towards the front edge of your mat like you're setting up for a warrior one. And let's just take a moment in warrior one, arms up and overhead. Imagine that band across your arms, pressing out, shoulders drop down, front ribs pull in, foot on your posture, backpack. And then to continue this twist, your hands come together, they drive down midline, and you're gonna take your left elbow to the outside of your right knee. Twist. And keep pushing that shin against the band, your arch against the band, and twist. Back leg super straight. As you breathe. And then you gracefully, slowly bail out. <sighs> Just pause. Got to do that one on the other side. And then we'll start to transition down towards the ground. So just take a pause. You might still feel where that band was against your shin. Might have some interesting strap marks after class. Okay. So the band goes underneath your right foot and across your left shin. Right foot, left shin. And cinch up on it. You now have a big stride between your feet. Woo. Feet underneath your ankles, underneath your outstretched arms, if you can. You can really push your shin into the band. Let your knee come straight over the heel, straight up and down on this shin bone, pressing hard into the back foot, providing your own resistance, letting that left thigh bone press down against the back of the leg. Left thigh bone dropping down out of the pelvis, opening up space in the top of this hip joint. Breathing. Now you're gonna pick up that right heel and pivot. Maybe wiggle the front foot a little bit wider for better balance. You're up on the toes of the back foot. Your back heel is swinging out to the side. Front knee is still bending. You're pushing shin against band arch against band, you're really bracing yourself here. Hips squaring towards the front edge of the mat. Momentary warrior one, crescent lunge variation. Back leg powers as straight as you can get it. Both thigh bones pressing into the hamstring of each respective leg. So that you can lift out of your pelvis, lift your pelvis off your thigh bones. And then bring your hands together and rotate your torso putting your right elbow to the outside of that left leg. The more you work and press out against the belt, the more stability you will have, and the more your bones will settle in. You're doing your best to breathe. And this is doing good stuff for your lower back. Really prying open that lower back in case it got a little bit scrunched in your half moon pose. And then gracefully release. Coming into your wide-legged forward fold. Don't even bother standing up. Just coming into a wide-legged forward fold. Cross to Padottanasana. Hands can be on bricks. Kind of finding a flat, neutral back. We're not trying to hang over yet. Just a flat, neutral back. Toes turn in. Knees turn out. Imagine a band across your shins. You've had it there before. Imagine a band across your shins as you spread between your heels and flare your toes. Keeping your knees unlocked, pressing your thighs wider. Sticking out your booty. Start pressing your thigh bones back into the hamstrings and hinge over. Thigh bones back into the hamstrings as you hinge over and bow your head. Hmm. 
you know, something to make a mental note of or practice in your own time with is imagine having a long belt, maybe two belts put together and that long belt coming across the top of your hips, across that uh, upper butt cheek, below the waistband and around the, along the stripes on the sides of your pants and underneath the flats of your feet, making a big triangle shape, encircling your body across your hips, underneath your feet, and maybe cinching down on that belt, put lots of heavy pressure right across your sacrum. How would that feel? Sometimes just imagining or, or mentally exploring it, you can actually physically feel it happen. And then you're gonna bend your knees. Don't even just come on up, just come all the way down. Bend your knees, come on down to the floor. If you need to adjust your camera, feel free to do so. Because from here, we are down for the count on the ground. I'm gonna do a little pigeon pose. Dead pigeon pose. Big unbuckled belt, unbuckled belt. The longer the better. Then if you got two of them, put two of them together, easier to work with. And I recommend some padding underneath your front hip bones. Well, actually, it's going to go underneath your pelvis. We're going to do a pigeon pose. So padding. And let me think about which foot I'm going to bring forward. I'm going to bring my left knee forward. Maybe it's your right. And you're gonna come into your standard pigeon and that padding can go underneath that back knee and some blockage can go underneath your hip. So you're gonna fill the gaps between your thigh bone and the floor. Put some padding underneath that back knee bone and you might have a block out in front or a pile of pillows out in front. Something to bow over in a moment, but we're not done yet. Notice that this hip is rolling down towards the floor like I'm dumping out my pocket change. Ideally, your back waistband is nice and flat. You can set dinner on it, the dinner plate, and it's not gonna spill. Nice and flat if you can get it there. So that might mean you have to hike this other hip up with some support. So don't be shy, put a brick underneath that hip so that your back waistband is nice and flat. Okay, I'm just talking to kill time because now we're gonna do the quad stretch. Loose, lasso that back foot. Get some nice long length. Come here, foot. Nice long length on that belt. And bow forward. I got my back toes curled under. I'm pressing into that back heel, lifting the back knee up off the mat, up off the pillow. I'm holding on to that band. And your forehead might be resting on a block or the floor, I like a block, so that you can hold on to your belts and kick into that belt and pull your shoulders down your back hard. And notice what that does to your front hip. And then release that. You don't want to stay there all day long. That's quite intense. And now the belt is going to go just below the ankle, above the ankle. And if you flex your foot, you got a little catch. And you're going to do your best to bow forward. If you got a nice long belt, you can pull on that belt. Mine's not quite long enough, so I have to put my elbows down and push that belt forward to drag that heel in towards my hips. So this is kind of nice. If you've got your elbows down, you can actually shrug your shoulders down your back and still pull on that belt to drag your heel in towards your butt, so shoulders down away from your ears.
And then release. Well, you've been in that pigeon pose for a while. All that belt was just a distraction to leave you in that pigeon pose longer. Now you get to switch sides. Moving slowly. Take a moment to pause. Again, we're not doing fancy vinyasa flow here. I think I'm going to spin. All right. Other leg forward, whichever that leg that is for you. Other leg forward, other leg back. Maybe some padding underneath that back knee. Maybe some padding underneath that floating butt cheek. Maybe some toys out in front of you. Something to put your forehead on in a moment. And each toe work that back leg in narrow. Try dumping the pocket change out of that hip pocket. Work on squaring, leveling off the hips. So level. You put your dinner plate on the back side and it's not going to tip to one side or the other. Squared means this front thigh bone is pulling back deep into the hip joint, swinging out to the side. All right. Belt. That's my sneaky way of making you do a little bit of a back bend. And belt that foot. And then bow forward. Back toes curled under, pressing into that back heel, bowing forward. Maybe your forehead rests on a brick, or maybe it rests on the floor. And you're going to kick that back leg straight. Kick that back leg straight, pressing into that back heel hard. But you're pulling on the belt at the same time. So even as you're pressing into that back heel, you're keeping the leg short and plugged into your pelvis. It's not a shoulder thing. This is a leg thing and the pelvis thing. Working that back leg, pulling on it hard with the belt. And I'm leaving you here for at least three breaths because that does interesting things in your hips. And then you get to soften. And then that belt goes around the ankle and you flex the foot flat and you once again bow forward. Maybe your forehead rests on a bricks, so maybe your elbows rest on the floor. And you're dragging that heel into your butt. And you drop your shoulders away from your ears. And then bail out. I'm going to come into a seated twist, and then we'll be down for the count. So seated twist, it's nice to sit on something. Pillow, block, whatever you have. And if you thought right and left was confusing enough, Check this out. Now I'm going to make a small loop to go around my right foot. I'm going to mirror you. You're going to pelt the belt around your right foot. Belts around the right foot. I'm going to take this left leg, cross it under. And then just drag this right foot straight in. You don't even have to cross it over. You want to, you can cross it over, but you don't have to. Now this is, the belt is around my right foot. I'm holding onto it with my left hand and I'm gonna take it around my waist. I'm gonna keep taking it around my waist so it's back over here on the right side. And I'm holding onto it with my right hand. If you have the foot crossed over, it would look like that. If the leg cross is over, go ahead, let it do it. Cross it over only if you keep both sit bones down. If you cross it over and you tilted, you're probably better off here. Both sit bones solid on whatever you're sitting on. Another way to modify this with, to keep your sit bones down is to sit on more stuff. Make sure your sit bones are firmly attached to whatever you're sitting on. And again, the belt is around the bottom of your right foot. It went around your waist and you're holding onto it once again with your right hand. 
So now your left hand is free. Your left hand comes up, keeps it up nice and long and tall. You make this look really good, and then you take that left arm diagonal across. Maybe hook your elbow to the outside of the knee. Reach down, put the belt into your left hand. Now your right hand is free. You're gonna shoulder shrug, hitchhike that left shoulder up, back, and down, and bring that right hand behind you and slip your fingertips into the belt. You might see my hand sneaking out around here, coming around my waist. Climbing down that belt as far as I can get that right hand to go. Now my left hand can release. Only holding on with my right hand behind my back. My left hand is up. So they can sit up tall. Maybe hold on to the knee. And I try pushing my foot against the band. And I try pushing my knee against my hand. But I'm keeping the knee upright. I'm not letting it swing out to the side. I'm keeping it centered as I turn my body a little bit further. And breathe. Again, ideally both sit bones are down. your backpack. Long, elegant neck. And release. Other side. Take a moment to transition slowly. It goes around the other foot. I've got the belt around my left foot. Bring this right leg underneath. Okay, I'll turn it around here for just a moment. And it goes around. Am I doing that right? Yeah. No, that's not right. It goes. <laughs> okay. It's around the bottom of your left foot and you're going to take it in your right hand out to the side i'm mirroring you this is really confusing out to the side and around your waist all the way around back to your left hand that's correct so you can have the foot just pull it straight back or if you can cross it over without tipping over you can cross it over and leave it crossed over this is the starting position Probably better for most of us. Belts in the left hand, right hand, left hand. Belts in the left hand, and it's around the left foot. Good. You're going to hold on fairly close and sit up nice and tall. And now your right hand is free. And you take that right arm diagonal across. And you can hold on to that belt and work that left hand around your waist. Maybe slip your fingers into that belt. You end up with your left hand behind your back and your right arm is up and that right arm comes diagonal across again you might hold on to the outside of me keep it from falling open and then push that left thigh into the right hand push your left thigh out against the belt and turn look over the back shoulder keep pressing that shin wide and you're holding onto the belt and you're not letting it go anywhere. And you're holding onto the knee and you're not letting it go anywhere. And you're breathing. And all kinds of fancy is happening in your lower back. And then release. Time flies when you're having fun. So you're going to make your way down to the ground and you have options. But first, take that slow transition down to the ground and have all your toys nearby. If you have a wall or a chair available to you, you might want to do legs up a wall or legs up a chair like we did last week. Belt your shins together just like we did last week for legs up. Or you can do a variation uh, that doesn't require a wall or a chair and it's constructive rest pose. For constructive rest pose, once again, you get a belt. And that belt is going to hold your thighs together. You take your feet as wide apart as your mat, turn your toes in, your toes turn not in, and not knee them pigeon toed, 
And then you use the belt, again, not a tourniquet, it's just a belt, not a tourniquet, and you're using that belt to hold your thighs together but not cut off circulation. Okay, take a moment to get it nice and flat and comfortable on your legs. Make sure that buckle is not digging into your skin. And I've got this buckle fairly close to my knees, but still on the thighs. Knees bent, feet flat. Pillow for the head if you're using one. Oh, there he is, right on time. Must be the end of class. <laughs> okay. Oh, knees bent, feet flat, toes turn in. Knees held together with the belt so that you can just settle in. Or if you have your legs up on a chair, and have your thighs tied together. You have your legs up a wall. You can tie your thighs or your shins together just so that your legs can really relax. You don't have to hold them together. They stay together within the confines of that bale. And then shrug those shoulders underneath your body. Put on that posture backpack once again. And let your side ribs flare out to the sides. Let your fingers flare out to the side. Close your eyes. Turn your attention inward.
And begin to wiggle your fingers and toes. Take a full, deep, full body breath. Stretching, moving, slowly transition.